Here's a little interesting video. This uh, the video I'm about to play for you is of uh, radical Republican Congressman Matt Gates, and he was very mildly confronted about the fact that he continues to insist that Trump won on local TV. And this is being reported uh, sort of all over the place as Matt Gates gets humiliating reality check to his face on live local TV or uh, on alternate Matt Gates slapped with epic reality check after echoing Trump's voter fraud claims. It's not really what happened. Now, I appreciate I appreciate that Gates was pushed, you know, challenged at all on his lies about 2020. But basically what happens here is Gates says, I believe Trump won. And the interviewer goes, yeah, but that would require like a lot of conspiracy, you know, a lot of people acting together. And then Gates just spews a ton of nonsense. So it's not it's not a major reality check. Let's take a look at it. So you're still maintaining 2020 election was stolen. Is, are we still going with that? Listen, I believe that Donald Trump won the 2020 election. I believe that he Wait, won the electoral you can't, college. You can't say that without saying that there was a gigantic conspiracy across this country and supervisor of elections offices everywhere right. to make this happen. And we haven't still seen any evidence that proves that. Yeah, because so many of the courts that should have taken those matters up rejected evidentiary hearings on jurisdiction grounds. I mean, I know the affidavits that came out of Michigan regarding the TCF Center in Detroit. Now, remember, this brings us back to Affidavits are not evidence. And yes, affidavits, affidavits can can be introduced and examined, but affidavits are not actually evidence. And this is just another one of the lines that they keep repeating. It's almost taking me back to December of 2020. Aff we, but we have affidavit. Affidavits are not strictly speaking evidence. Established a factual basis to be able to go and have evidentiary hearings. But too often, I think uh, judges just didn't have the courage to take it up. Courage. And it's most unfortunate. But I'm still engaged in the fight on election integrity going forward. Oh, yeah. Because Florida used to be the laughing stock of elections. And Governor DeSantis fired the elections officials who didn't run clean elections. And now, lo and behold, Florida's a model for the country. So I want to bring <laughs> Florida's message and our story. Can you imagine? Florida as a model for the country. Um, so listen, I mean, like, it's great that he was asked, uh, where is your evidence for that? But at the same time, uh, that was not exactly a brutal reality check that it's made out to be. Now, notice the language Matt Gates uses. He says, I believe Donald Trump won. They are the ones who always say facts don't care about your feelings. And yet he believes Trump won absent any actual facts that would point that way. Um, uh, one other thing, there is this whole. So Matt Gates has a lot going on. One of the things is he's being investigated for the potential child sex trafficking and all of that. He's hired a child, you know, uh, sex crime defense attorney and all of these different things. On the other hand, he's also palling around with Marjorie Taylor Greene and telling lies about the election. The third thing is there's still this very strange story about how he says his dad was extorted by someone or there was an attempt to extort. He's also asked about that during this interview. Any updates on the Department of Justice investigation? Well, the, the one big update is that since we talked last, the individual who had been indicted for trying to extort me pled guilty to extorting me and my family. And uh, I hope that that the wire, investigation, the wire fraud. Yes. Charge. And I hope that that investigation is ongoing because other people literally went on national television and said they were working with Steve Alford in this deal. Those people should be the next to be indicted. OK, so he hopes. But I but I guess doesn't know if the investigation is still going on. Uh, it would be really great for one of these cartoonish Trumpian right wingers to have a really big fall from grace. And uh, we've talked before about fishy stuff with Marjorie Taylor Greene and taking two homestead exemptions, which you can only take one. And I'm not going to go back through what a homestead uh, de declaration of homestead is and, and all of that. But you're only allowed to have one that was being investigated. You know, did it did it fall into some kind of investigative black hole? We don't know. Um, Lauren Boebert, a whole bunch of different campaign funds related things. Will anything ever come of it? We don't know. Uh, Madison Cawthorn, whole other thing, you know, the Russian honeypot. I mean, we can't even get into that right now. Matt Gates, the one facing the most serious criminal charges, potentially. It would be a really interesting thing to see if one of these, you know, the major cartoonist Trumpists, the younger cartoonish Trumpists are, are people like these, not cartoonists. This guy's no. This guy's no Bill Watterson, that, that's for sure. But the, the most cartoonish uh, Trumpists are Boebert, 
uh, Gates, Green and Cawthorn at this point, sort of. If one of them had a real big fall from grace, particularly if they um, had criminal charges against them or some other major scandal, it would be interesting to see how Trump would react in general to that group, probably initially saying they're being railroaded. But over the long term, maybe he would sort of step back from supporting that group. Unclear. We will see. We will follow it. But hey, at least they asked Matt Gates to try to defend the, the claim that Trump won in November. He didn't do a great job, but he tried.